Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. After spending a while on Yanis, it is time for us to now move on and see what we're doing next. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to take stock, we're going to do a little quest rundown, we're going to do a little inventory rundown, and we're going to make sure that we're basically ready to go forward. We're also going to speak to our companions, most importantly our new companion, and see what they have to say and then basically work out where we're at from there. So, um, should we do inventory first? Let's do inventory first. Uh, it is not this direction. It is this direction. Wonderful. Right. Why do I want to go to the captain's quarters? Well, because I want to go and check if we had anything in storage. I can't remember if we put anything in storage, but we may have. So let's just have a little look here. Vault. I did put some stuff in storage. Was there anything I put in storage that I was like, ah, I'm putting it here for a reason? Uh, I'm basically looking, I guess, for anything which uh, was like, ah, like this. Like that was what I was looking for in particular, actually. Uh, beyond that, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it for storage. Okay, cool. Now, why did I want to take this out? Well, because basically I want to see whether a new person can use it. They cannot. All right then, back to storage you go. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, I was thinking that they had Aldar Aldari things. They might be able to use Drukari things. Nope. Apparently, different. Um, yeah, technological paths there. So let's do a little inventory uh, look at here and see what kind of stuff we've got. Uh, how are we going to sort this? Let's go type. That way these are all kind of um, grouped. Aldari Chainsword. We have nobody who can use an Aldari Chainsword. Aldari Long Rifle is worse than Wanderer's Portent. So I am going to send that to Cargo. Um, the Arc Rifle. I think the Arc Rifle is not useful on anyone. But we also only have one of them. So that's fine. Let's go type again. Uh, Biomancy Staff. Um, it's probably not worth keeping. Next up we have you. Is this bolt pistol better than your bolt pistol? No. Alright, well that's going to cargo. Uh, chain Axe. You. Uh, is this Chain Axe better than your weapons? No. Alright, to cargo. This is easy so far. Uh, Lasgun. Yeah, back in here. Lasgun. Um, I don't think we have anybody who uses a Lasgun currently. Okay. Welcome to Cargo. Power Mall. Uh, again, not really. To Cargo. Next. Melta. Now, it was suggested that I had to look at Melta by some people, so let's have a look. You can't use it. You can't use it. You can't use it. Heinrichs can use it. It is better than his revolver. Yes. Uh, it only has one shot, but he can only do one shot of his pistol now anyway. Uh, is melt a scorching area attack? It is armor pen? Okay, potentially. You can't use it. You can't use it. Now you could use it. However, we've taken stuff, which means that you should use plasma, right? Uh, let's see. Pascal features talents. Pla I'm looking for anything that says plasma on here. I thought we'd taken something that... Yeah, well, he has plasma weapon proficiency, but that wasn't really what I was looking for. I thought it took something that meant that he was specifically good on plasma. Maybe aiming protocols? Ah, uh, plasma and melter. Oh, okay. So, actually, he could use melter if he wanted him to. So, he's also a maybe. So, he could maybe use it, and then Abelard can also use it, but let's be honest, that's a waste of Abelard's um, talents. Here, do we think that the Melter Gun is better than the Plasma Pistol? No, because we like the Plasma uh, Pistol having a cheap attack, because then we can spend less AP on it and do other stuff. 
So that means it's basically Heinrichs. Now the problem is Heinrichs cannot equip it into his second slot because um, it's a two-handed weapon. So now we have no real use for it right now. I can see a use for it at some point. I think that this is not necessarily terrible. The only problem is if we equip it here, um, he loses a, a single cost attack, which is actually still valuable on him. Hmm. Okay. We will keep it around, but have no immediate use for it. That's it where I think we're at here. Modified Bolter. Uh, oh, right. That w this is actually something that we have because we put this on you. Because I forgot we gave you the Flamer, which we've never actually used. Okay, well, we'll keep that around then because we don't know what we're doing with that. Needle Pistol. Um, it does more damage as a pistol than these other ones. Let's maybe replace the Splinter Pistol with this. Uh, rate of Fire is much lower, so you can't do Burst, though. But actually, maybe, maybe we could replace, actually, the Shuriken Pistol. Yeah. So, although Rate of Fire is worse, um, the Single Shot will do more damage. Yeah. Let's try that. That might be okay. And we'll keep the other one around for now. Officer's Chainsword um, is worse than what you're using. It means it's almost certainly worse than what, um, yeah, than what everyone else is using. So let's get rid of that. Uh, add to cargo. Orth Orthlark Mark uh, Four. It's worse than your stuff. Uh, let's keep. I say I don't think we've ever seen an Orthlark Orthlark Mark. Four before, so let's leave that there. Let's have a little look at you and the power claymore, which is maybe better than your thunder hammer, but not really. Yeah, um, it's maybe better than your great sword if I was only going to give you one of these weapons. Right, if I was only going to give you one of these, it would be better than your great sword. Um. That's possibly a good idea. Yeah, we could do that. Then we could give you a Melter Secondary. Something like that. We wouldn't want him to use the Melter, though. That's the problem. Like, we basically just would not want him to use this Melter ever. In which case, no. We, we should stick with what we had. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think we're happy with that. These are fine. The fact that there is a shuriken pistol, though, does mean that we have something else that you can equip. But we have two things that you could equip here. Uh, why does this do, like, no da- Oh, because it's a short-range weapon. I was going to say, why does it do no damage? Uh, well, not short-range. It's a um, multiple-fire uh, ammo weapon. We can use burst fire. That's what I'm meaning. Has a higher rate of fire weapon. That's a better way of putting it. Yes, yeah, so we could give you that, or we could give you the shuriken pistol, which you could use at zero range. Yeah, so that would be useful on her, potentially. So she can now use that pistol if something comes up to her at no range. She can at least still shoot. That's fine. Uh, okay, we have this staff, which is useless currently, I think. Um... Yeah, I don't see a great reason to keep it. We have this one as well, which we don't really have a use for. Then we have the Hand Flamer. And we have this. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have any particular use for any of this, but I don't really want to get rid of it yet because we don't have any other ones that match. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at this stuff. So we have Armor. So, first of all... Uh, this is just garbage, I think. So let's add to cargo. That needs heavy armor proficiency. So heavy armor proficiency, the, currently the only person we're thinking about for that is you, potentially. Um, yeah, we're happy with where you are, though. Base armor property, logic divided by 10% armor. Logic divided by 10. So logic is 6. So that'd be... 
Yeah, 6% extra armor. So it could be 26% armor. Yeah, so this is at some point going to be better than what he's got. But it's not right now. This I think we can actually probably add to cargo. We'll think about that. And then this one we could almost certainly add to cargo. I just don't like getting rid of things that are like, this is a unique thing. Because I'm like, well, what if we need it later? I don't know. That's fine. And then we have all of these equipables. Uh, which basically we're looking at people who were not in the party. So, uh, awareness. It's not really your thing. Is it your thing? Could be your thing. There you go. Have some awareness. Next one. All attacks of opportunity deal agi bonus. Well, you can't apply it and you can't apply it. It's only people in melee range who are doing attacks of opportunity. And we don't really have an agi person currently. So, that's not really that useful. Battle Psyker Boots. These might be for you. The wearer gains percentage... Uh, sorry, gains perception bonus percent dodge until the start of the next turn for each enemy affected by their Psy Power or Psyker Staff attacks stacks. Okay. Um, or 3% dodge until the end of uh, combat for each Psy Power they use. Okay. So... We're either getting 5% dodge if we can apply a psychic power to someone else, or 3% dodge till the end of combat for just using one. I'm happy with the ones you got right now. Uh, blessed Cape. Increases melee attack damage, so that's not useful for either of you. Colsus Toot. Uh, when the wearer uses a psychic power uh, attack, they either restore 2 AP or take 10 warp damage. No, I think I'm okay. Uh, lowers... Uh, all enemies' perception by wearer's fell bonus doesn't matter. Next, whenever the wearer of these gloves gets an injury or falls unconscious in battle, their allies gain a plus one bonus to damage. And don't think we need that. Also, uh, just to have a look here, uh, she is missing uh, an accessory currently and gloves. So, if we got gloves for her, using grenades costs one less AP. Uh, reduce the recoil of all automatic weapons. Maybe uh, I can give you the Grenadier Gloves. That's fine. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? A bonus to Coercion minus penalty to Awareness. Or bonus to Commerce is what you currently have. Bonus to Commerce is fine. Apply some minus 10 perception... A uh, penalty to perception for all attacks made against the wearer and to all enemies in a two cell radius from the wearer. Okay. We all have hats on. And I think they're all better. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, whenever the wearer uses endure, none of them can use endure. Lower warp. Uh, I think we have the highest lower warp, and we already looked at these. Oh, wait, no. You, you've got. You can use the heretical follower one. Um, sure, why not? Just for now. Although if we're in the party and you have less, then why would I take the debuff? That's actually a good point, me. Good. Uh, raises momentum to 175 whenever they kill five enemies in a row in one turn. Uh, it's probably not that relevant. Yep. And then, uh, we've seen these. Oh, Warp Conductor gloves actually we haven't seen. After triggering a psychic phenomenon or, where, or perils of the warp, psi rating is increased by 1 until the end of combat, gains momentum and temporary wounds equal to their resolve, going to only be equipped by an unsanctioned psyker. That could be good, actually. Yeah, let's swap these out. Especially if we're going to use more psychic powers, that could definitely be much, uh, much better. And then you... I cannot give you the gloves that sounded fantastic for you a second ago, the sniper gloves. Because uh, they're not all dairy equipment. Well, are they good for us? Uh, every time we deal damage, the target's weapon skill and ballistic skills reduce by minus five. I think I actually prefer the sniper gloves. There we go. Now I'm looking through here. So I think these are actually better for you because you're going to attack a lot of people in theory if you use the burst on the splinter pistol. Yeah, I think that seems good. Right. Uh, we've had a look at stuff. Um, anybody not equipped? You're not equipped. 
Let's give you another, well, give you a grenade. I'm not too worried about what these people actually have equipped. I'm more just making sure they have something in the slots. Because if they have something there, they can use it. Uh, if they have nothing there, they can't. So, make sure we're just equipped with things. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you could do it with another bag. And then, like, I don't know, one of those. And then you can have one of... Uh, those. Sure. Why not? Looks good to me. Wonderful. Right. Everybody is set out and equipped with things. It's good. Oh, is this a plant from uh, Yanis? I think it is. Because these are meant to be your victory things, right? So, oh, we can see over the top. A fascinating, uh, uh, delicately smelling flower from the agro world Janus is but one symbol of the rescue of the planet from the clutches of the chaos worshippers. Cool. Let's have a chat with some uh, party members and see what they want to do. Like, for instance, let's have a chat with you, Roulette. Roulette stands out from her surroundings like a Janusian jungle tree in a garden of manicured topiary. Unsettling beauty and alluring otherness. In her posture, her gestures, her piercing stare radiate from the Alderi. Um, Footfall is above uh, is abuzz with rumours about Xenos ravaging the sector. Do you think this could be your kin from Kudorak? Is that snake venom seeping from your lips? We, the children of Azurion, are no strangers to the art of war. We are not raiders or butchers. Or least of all, fools. When a craft world is beset by calamity, its inhabitants do not start a war with every monkey in the sector. If you are looking for enemies, look for them elsewhere. Okay. What happened to your homeworld? It is a mystery as inscrutable as the sigh of the last immortal. As deep as the waters of a dark ocean. And I can tell you little, for I was far away, on a mission with my unit. We returned at the appointed hour, but we did not find Kruderak in its celestial harbor. It happened many turns ago, or standard years, as you say. But I remember that moment as if it happened this very day. The memory of a loss is always stronger than the memory of a gain. Especially when you lose something as significant as a home, or an entire world. We searched, we called out, we looked everywhere, but we saw only emptiness and the echo of an echo of calamity. Countless days passed before I found myself on the Lilithon and met some of my kin. Those refugees who had barely managed to reach our ancestral planet, their stories were far from being the fruit of truth I so badly craved. Those who agreed to talk to me were few, for most saw me as a wayward daughter who had spurned the honorable paths, and they would not stop babbling about a terrible disease that spread black tendrils of pain over the paths of the Infinity Circuit and deadened our world one segment after another. The ones who survived fled in fear and wandered between the stars, until the Lilithon's warm light reached out to some of them. Infinity Circuit The crystalline psychoactive matrix that supplies a well of psychic power to an Alderi craft world and provides a massive ancestral mind to advise and guide the Alderi who dwell within it. Some, like Muaran, lay the blame entirely on Monkey. However, I do not know the truth. But I hope, oh, I desperately hope and pray to the gods that someday it will be revealed to me. What's an infinity circuit? Is idle curiosity a defining feature of the monkey? Or are you trying to learn about the weaknesses of my people so you can destroy another world of the children of Asurion? Forgive me, Ellen Tark. But I am not ready to immerse you in the font of my people's deepest mysteries. 
Okay, well, I mean, the tooltip told me the answer anyway, so that's fine. What was your world like before it fell? Kruderok cannot be described in your language. It can only be sung. Encased in a filigree of sounds. A melody as complex and delicate as the Infinity Circuit. Its energy network. It can be seen in the golden hues of sunlight. Felt in the breath of celestial winds. Though it was an artificial world, it was just as alive as any real planet. But I must see clearly. Not only light, but also shadows. I yearn to remember only Kruderok's beauty, but it had a dark side too. My world was isolated for too long. Like a lake of stagnant water, there was no movement or renewal, and even the sweetest outbursts of life soon turned fetid. Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? Had there been no stagnation? Had our elders not been so blind in their dogmatism and our youths not lacking in courage, then perhaps... Kruderok would still be alive even now? Hmm. How do your craft worlds even work? Is idle curiosity a defining feature of the okay. monkey? Or are you trying uh, what can you to talk about the history about the of the Eldari? Of my people? I am afraid your life is too fleeting and your memory too feeble to encompass the entirety of my knowledge. My people ruled the stars when yours did not even have a name. But many of our songs and stories were lost, stolen by she who thirsts. I can tell you the children of Asurion lived, created, caressed the stars as if they were pearls on a string, until Cylon Thresh smothered our empire in her terrifying embrace. Different branches of the Eldari chose different paths to salvation. My ancestors chose an eternal journey through the starry void, living on craft worlds instead of real planets. We rescued countless wonders from the days before, but far from all. You saw this on the Lilithan. Not even we can always master the gates our ancient ones built. This is the story of the Asuriani. There are branches that chose a different path, gruesome and frightening. But I do not wish to tell you about them. That is our dark side. Just as your kin have many dark sides of their own. Okay. And you keep mentioning she who thirsts. What can you tell me about her? Why ask this question? Is it idle curiosity or something else? Do not turn your thoughts towards Cylon Thresh, whatever your motive. She is downfall. She is hunger. She is the enemy of all that is good in the universe. She is an enemy to the Eldari, and I hope to you as well. Roulette stresses the last words, looking at you inquisitively. Okay, I think she wants a uh, firm answer here. I was thinking we might go with two. There's nothing wrong with curiosity. But I think that she would find that a problem. I think we're going to say the top one. The Chaos Gods are enemies of the Imperium, which means they are my enemies. You can be sure of that. Just a very firm, they are my enemies. We're on the same side here. We are as different as starlight and its reflection in a muddy puddle. But we share a common enemy. Constancy is our strength. Okay, I've learned what I wanted to know. You have my gratitude. As you wish, Elon Tark. Okay, completely out of left field. What gift would an Aldari give to someone they liked? Our species are too different from one another. What touches our souls is unlikely to make a significant impression on your kind. Just as I find your concept of offering material gifts to be clumsy and primitive. Okay, allow me to ask you a few personal questions. What do you wish to talk about? Uh, tell me about yourself. Who were you before you came to Yanis? I followed my path. 
Do you know what a path is to the children of Asurion? It is more than a chosen, what do you call it, craft. The path is how each of us moves through the labyrinth of existence, inside and out, in life and in spirit. It is both a journey and a fortress. It protects us from she who thirsts. To stray from the path is to fall into her dark embrace. The first path I walked was the path of awakening. It granted me the ability not merely to look, but to see, and to take notice of what I saw. My second path could have been that of a warrior, but I chose differently, for the ability to see called me beyond the boundaries of my homeworld. Though not everyone was pleased by this decision, I stepped onto the path of the outcast. I gained the freedom to choose, to question, to doubt where the others merely bow before the wisdom of a farseer who dictates the will of destiny. And I will follow my path until I reach its pinnacle. Okay, cool. There's a little bit more to unpack there, but we'll get to it later, I'm sure. What's it like for you being on my ship? It feels like I am in the belly of a bird with steel wings. Cold and unliving, but stubbornly blazing through the dark. It lacks life with its light and beauty, but although your vessel cannot even remotely be compared to a craft world, I feel strangely satisfied. We, the Assyriani, are born and dwell on craft worlds. To find myself on a moving world again, even one such as yours, is a source of much joy. Well, that's good. Thank you for your answers. The words of truth sound like music. This is what our people say. Tell me about your kin and your homeworld. I refuse to discuss this with a monkey. We are but traveling companions who happen to be following the same road among the stars. Do not even try to get under my skin. It will not work. Am I still unworthy of discussing your world and your kin? Urlet nods curtly, saying nothing. I mean, it was two seconds later, so I, I get what I deserve. What do you think is happening on Yanis right now? The Lilithon is purifying herself of the corruption brought by the servants of Cylon Thrash. Gardens and birds, animals and people. Many are gone forever, and even more are corrupted beyond healing. But the Lilithon is stronger. This world will live. My kin are probably still looking for a means to enter the webway. May the Lilithon spirit aid them in this endeavor. Beyond the gate lies salvation, and perhaps even knowledge about the fate of Kruderok and the remaining survivors. The Webway is an extra-dimensional space, also known as the Labyrinth Dimension. This links worlds, sectors, and stars from one end of the galaxy to another. Okay. Cool. Uh, why did you agree to join me? Is it not strange for an Aldari to be following a human? The outcasts my path led me to had a saying. Let me translate it for you. If you fall off a cliff... Grab the roots, and do not ask if they belong to a weed or a noble rosebush. You are the root I grabbed, Elantak, because I fell off a cliff. My homeworld is gone. My kin are either dead, or hiding no one knows where. By joining forces with you, I may be able to nurture a seedling of the truth I sow. Deeply yearn for. Okay, I must take my leave. Okay. Well, um, we learned a lot about her there. Yeah. Um, strangely relatable, as in, in terms of like, you would expect it to be a lot more alien the way it's set out, but, you know, I think what they're trying to present is that the Xenos are not as different as uh, the Imperium would like you to believe. Talking of that, hello. To what do I owe this visit? Um, I'm bored of Erlet. I want to hand the Xenos over to her, uh, to you. 
Uh, I just got a list of people. Uh, all right, Erlet, Idira. I'm just going to hand over my entire crew to you. Uh, what kind of gift do you think I should give Jay? Mistress Adari is a dangerous person. And dangerous people like dangerous things. Jai is probably partial to good weapons. She even has a small but enviable collection. Such a gift would not only be practical given her perilous trade, but it would also show that you have taken an interest in her as a person and her tastes. Such demonstrations are very important when dealing with info people with whom you would like to carry favor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, th thank you for letting me know. He had an answer all prepared. That is crazy. Okay. Um, I guess we could ask everyone else now and then maybe buy her the gift. Lord Captain. We've already asked you. Lord. That's fine. What kind of mad person is saying to um, Abelard, no, I, actually, I think you're doing a bad job. Time to leave. Hello. Nothing new to say there. That's fine. Hello. Lord Captain, your presence is welcome. And I wish to apologize for my prior coldness. After our first meeting, I was concerned that he would turn out to be another faithless offshoot of the Von Valancius dynasty, like... like the traitor Conrad. But now I see before me a worthy leader and servant of the Imperium. I am glad to accompany you in your endeavors. Are you ready to tell me more about yourself now? If such is the broke traitor's wish, although there isn't much I can tell, I am the Emperor's daughter and his servant. What else is there to know? Where'd you hail from? Now that I can tell you, I come from everywhere and nowhere. I... I am the child of officers of the Imperial Guard. I was born in the hold of a warship. Grew up following my parents' deployments from one planet to another. And lost my family in the flames of a righteous war. My memory is like wafts of smoke over a still battlefield. The grey of a ship's plating. The strict cadence of life in military camps. My mother's uniform. I loved looking at it. Then, that battle. The rumbling, the shouting, and the soot. The screams of soldiers burning alive and the gold of the regiment's Aquila, untouched by soot or blood, the last unsullied piece of a world that was going mad. That was my last memory of my mother and of my former life, before the Skull of Progenium and the Novitiate, before my trials, before the vows. So that golden shard you carry with you my own relic. It's the regiment's Aquila, or rather, the fragment that survived the attack, the explosions, and the fire. For me, it's a reminder that purity and radiance can be preserved, even in the heart of darkness. So how did you become one of the Adeptus Sororitis? Become? <laughs> it's such a strange word for it. It seems right, but is that how one talks about their destiny? If you're asking about the path itself, that's easy enough to answer. First, like many other orphans, I endured the Scholar Progenium. Those years were rough, but I remember the hardship fondly. Few things can compare with the feeling of satisfaction from a past trial, even if it leaves your body aching from exhaustion or your soul wincing in pain. I was one of the best among my peers, and I was selected for the novitiate in the ranks of the Adeptus Sororitas. When the hour came, I passed the trials and took my vows. <sighs> the most joyous day of my life. The Emperor's light has always been with me, but to accept it with all your heart, to utter the oaths, <sighs> that is a rapture like no other. Have you ever wished for a different lot in life? Have I ever? But, but that would be shameful weakness, almost heresy. Of course not. I was born for this. I live 
By the Emperor's will and in his light, I myself am the light. I must be the light for myself and for those who ask for my protection. I was chosen to serve, but beyond that, I won't deny it. Few things elate me as much as the thought that the heretic felled by my shot will never again orphan a child. Okay, well, thank you for your candor. It is my pleasure to be candid. Uh, I'm going to try forward to see if there's anything new to say. Or let's discuss Salus Prime and the relic that you wish to find. Of course. My mission is all I can think about. Okay. Um, have we already done these? I don't, I don't know. Tell me about St. Argenta, whose relic you're searching for. Gladly. Listen. Long ago, there was a blessed world. Thousands of stars covered the sky there. So bright that its denizens hardly knew the darkness of night. Thousands of rivers nurtured the soil. Thousands of gardens bloomed every spring, and at every moment, thousands of prayers were flying into the clear air, thanking and praising the Emperor. But one day, the people learned the meaning of darkness. Like a storm, accursed heretics who had sold themselves to the archenemy descended upon the planet. Shells flew from the sky that desolated whole cities and burned the gardens and filled the riverbeds with the blood of the faithful. Smoke and soot swallowed the skies and the thousand stars that had once shone over the world. Among the handful of survivors was one orphan who had watched all her family die and the garden she'd grown up in burn to ash. But in her heart, she knew the absolute truth. Just these three words. The Emperor protects. And knowing that, she never looked away from the black, terrifying, smoke-covered sky. There were no more bright stars to be seen. Except for one. Hmm. This uh, story of Saint Argenta sounds very familiar. The one star, the bright star, the silver star shone in the sky. And when the orphan smiled at it, the one star fell right into her hands. All the faithful in every corner of the continent who saw the trail of the falling star recognized it as an omen and went looking for the place where it landed. And they rallied together. And with the light of the one star, they found their salvation. The girl from the story, that was Saint Argenta? Yes, that was the beginning of her hagiography. It is known that she lived on a world where heretics staged a terrible insurrection. They wiped out all life on the planet, except those whom Saint Argenta managed to save with the one star, and with the strength of her faith. After that, she traveled between worlds gripped by turmoil on her ship marked with a silver star, and brought hope to the faithful. Numerous accounts confirm this, her coming helped people turn the tide of the war and wipe away corruption before the Imperium's main forces even arrived. Millions of people owed their lives to her, but the heretics, having realized their imminent defeat, sent the remnants of their forces after the ship with the Silver Star. It fell from the skies onto an obscure world. There are no definitive records of how old Argenta was at the time. In some chronicles, she's even called the Child Saint, but their credibility is questionable. Either way, she didn't live long, but she left a bright trail in her wake. So what like is this one? star. Oh. So what is this one star? <laughs> if I only knew. Neither the hagiography nor the legends give a straight answer. 
Classical iconographers believed that the star turned into a banner woven from silver thread, which, when brought onto the battlefield, would shed light that blinded only heretics, but did no harm to the faithful. Most of them portrayed Saint Argenta as a girl carrying this banner. Others think that upon falling from the sky, the one star became a holy chainsword, which Argenta later used to strike down monsters and enemies of the Imperium. In some of the earlier engravings, Argenta is depicted wearing power armor with a silver star on her chest. One theological theory suggests that this armor was, in fact, the relic. Some even think that the One Star is actually the ship on which Argenta traveled. I feel that my undertaking will be fulfilled when I find the answer that has eluded the Ecclesiarchy for millennia. I pray we find the way to Salus Prime soon. The ruinous powers must be aligned against us. They stand in the way of faith. I have no more questions. One day we will reach Salus Prime and stand before the gates of St. Argenta's ship. I know it. I believe. I don't know how it could happen, but I am getting the feeling that somehow Argenta could actually be St. Argenta, but we'll see. Like, rather than named after her, she could actually be it. As a child, she was there and then somehow grew up to be in this time, but I have no idea. Uh, what kind of gift do you think I could give Jay? On a completely different note. If you want to do her good, give her a dose of conscience and a fear of the Emperor. That is what she truly needs. But if you want to please her, give her some meaningless jewellery, expensive and shiny. Such baubles wield magical power over hearts like hers. Okay, well thank you for this conversation. Until next time. I will leave you be. I think we've asked enough people about their um, opinions on what Jay's going to uh, get right for right now. I think what we're going to do is we are going to end the episode. We're going to do the quest roundup next time. And then we're going to jump into this and see where we're going next. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.